Our title is not only No Way to Treat a Child, and I didn't know that Linda had come up with that title. Wow. But it's also Where's the Hope for the Palestinian Family? That is to say, for the people as a whole. And uh, we've got three persons who are going to speak to this. And uh, the first one is Jim Bettendorf, who is locally here. Uh, they live in Orange County. Jim was born, I think, in Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken. Married Nadia, who was born in Palestine, and have been working. At, Jim was in business, I believe, in the bank, weren't you, for a long time? Computer business. Computer business. And uh, retired, he has spent all kinds of effort and time on this issue, and particularly working with the Friends of Sabeel chapter here in Orange County. So I turn it over to Jim now, because he has some focus not only nationally, but locally, what can possibly be done. Jim. Okay, am I gonna reach? Thank you, Daryl. Um, firstly, I wanna thank the committee that worked with me to develop the material that is being distributed right now. Um, we formed a joint committee on violence against Palestinian children, and that's comprised of Reverend Deborah Daly and Marion Oliver and my wife, Nadia Bettendorf. And we've been doing research since earlier this year on a lot of different material that's out there on the internet. And the results of that is in front of you, and I'm gonna talk about that now. <clears throat> Firstly, you've heard a lot of information this morning. Unfortunately, much of it very depressing. But I think this is only the beginning. You've got to continue to learn about this issue because it is a continuing issue. And we've helped you to do that by listing some videos. It's on page two. You'll see uh, several visit videos that are listed. And you can access those on your computer. Most of them are on um, YouTube. And they're produced by different groups that are active in the Middle East. And I want to point out uh, one in particular, Defense of Children International for Palestine. And um, they've done some remarkable work on documentation, as you heard earlier, about the abuses of children and uh, incarceration of children. And it shows the effects on the children, as well as talking about statistics. So they actually have developed a film, that's the one that's uh, listed, with a study guide. So if your church group wants to study the issue in detail, you can look at this 21 minute video and then use the study guide to discuss it. The next that is on the list is um, put out by an Iranian international news network. So the Iranians are active in reporting on the Middle East far more so uh, than the U.S. press is. And they talk about statistics, and you can see that cited on that video there. The third one was broadcast on the Australian Broadcasting Corporation's four, and it's called Four Corners. And it's unusual in its both in its length and in its breadth, because it was done by an Israeli. Uh, it was done by uh, a person who interviewed Israeli lawyers, former Israeli soldiers, and it was put together by a lawyer. It's called Stone Cold Justice, and it's 45 minutes long. Also very good for study groups. The fourth is uh, put together, let's see, by Press TV Global News, and it deals with violence 
against the children in jail. The last one on the list deals with violence in the daily lives of Palestinians. You've heard earlier some of the comments that were made. Um, that even those who are not arrested and detained uh, suffer violence at the hand of both soldiers and settlers as they go to school. And there are groups of mothers who get together in Jerusalem and walk their children to school to avoid the attacks by the settlers. So that's a list of just a few of the videos. There are literally hundreds of them out there. Next, what you can do is investigate the seven organizations working with Palestinian children listed on the attached page. That would be page three and four. Register receive their periodic activity reports from at least one or two of them. And you're going to be learning quite a bit about what is going on in real time. One of the important ones to keep monitoring because they do such a comprehensive job is Defense for Children International. And that information is listed. Kinder USA, um, who Leila Mariotti, Al Mariotti is affiliated with, does a very good job dealing with nutrition and chronic malnutrition and works not only in Gaza, but in Palestinian camps throughout the Middle East. The next one that I'm citing is Middle East Children's Alliance, otherwise known as Mecca. And this is an organization that also works in Gaza, but they have a very active chapter up in the Bay Area that raises money on a continuous, continuous basis for them. One of their current projects is the Mai project, which is Arabic for water, bringing clean water to the children of Palestine. Lastly on, on that page is the United Paris, uh, Palestine Appeal. And this is a group of American Palestinians who have gotten together, and you'll notice it's one of the oldest groups, it's been around for a long time, and have ra raised a lot of money to fund other organizations on the ground in Palestine that are working on education, health, nutrition, and recreation. And one of the questions that was asked to me uh, yesterday was, there are a lot of organizations working with the Palestinians. Why aren't there Palestinian organizations working with the Palestinians? Well, there's two answers to that. One is, this is one of those organizations, and as you see, it's been working at it for a long time. But it's very difficult for the Palestinians in Palestine to organize and to improve their lot, but they are doing it as best they can. And they use it as a method of supporting each other. They have a word in Arabic that's called samud. It doesn't translate too well into English but it's, it might be translated as steadfastness. So they support each other, not only in material ways, but emotionally as well. On the last page, we have the group Hope and Play, American Near East Refugee Aid. And I wanna point out Bright Stars of Bethlehem. This is one of the newer ones that is coming out of Bethlehem. It was founded by Reverend Mitri Raheb, who's a Lutheran minister in Bethlehem. And he's done some really remarkable work in trying to bring education to the people of Bethlehem. So he started both a trade school and an academic school. He's got an arts academy, and they are continuously raising money in the US. You can look them up on the internet and see what they're up to. So those are the organizations. But you can also help by introducing the subject of violence against Palestinian children at your church, 
among your friends and family. There's very little coverage in the American press, so it has to be spread by word of mouth. You can continue to keep track of what's going on by looking up groups, groups like Defense of Children International and by reading Mondo Weiss. Mondo Weiss is a newspaper that carries a lot of coverage on Israel. Next, as was said earlier, write, call, or meet with your politicians, both your congressional representatives and your senators, who are supplying $3.8 billion a year to Israel to pay for attacks on Gaza and the military occupation. You need to ask them to stop, and you can take a step today, if you haven't already done so, by signing this postcard that's on the tables in the back. It's a postcard that's addressed to the president and ask him to stop sending that money to Israel. And it mentions the um, annual arrests of the Palestinian children, and then ask the president to do what he claimed he would do in his campaign, which is to use that money for infrastructure, things at home, such as education and health care. So you can take that step right today, but continue it. Keep up the flow of emails and keep up the contact with your congressional representatives. The next step you can take, and that was mentioned also, is to support boycott, divestment, and sanctions. And in particular, I want to point out the campaign against Hewlett Packard, who you have heard earlier, is one of the uh, facilitators of the occupation and the incarceration. There is material on the tables about that. You can also go to the Friends of Sabeel website we have a campaign that has been launched recently, Make Your Church HP Free. So we're asking you to not only stop buying HP computers and printers and ink, but to talk to your church about taking action. And this is one action that can be taken, and as you heard, it has a definite impact on uh, companies. Lastly, and this one is a little bit harder, visit Palestine. Those who have not been to Palestine, it's an absolute must. <clears throat> Those who have been there before, go again. Not only to see what's going on on the ground, but to talk to the people and give them support. This is very important to them that they know they are not alone and isolated. Go to the Arab cities of Nazareth, Bethlehem, East Jerusalem, and don't just visit, stay there, talk to the people, go around to the shops, let them know that there are people in the United States that are concerned for them and fighting for them. Give them hope by your presence. Those are a few things you can do. There's a lot of other things you can do, but um, that's a good start. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, 